Well, I, it's true, I'm, I'm moving motion. The situation around the world, as of now, is very serious on cyber attack. At the eighth assembly, I was the chairman of ICT and cybercrime. Based on that, I had some privileged information and I have a knowledge of situation of the country. And I know we are not prepared at all. God forbid if there's any attack today. I'll give you an example. We went on official assignment to South Korea. While we were in South Korea, we now went to their cyber security agency. And there was an attack. They now took us to a room. There was an attack in that room between China, Russia, and America, and another European country. Every second they were attacking each other. Every second. We now ask the question that why is it the concentration on North America and Europe? Look at Africa, particularly Nigeria, no any activities there. The chairman of ICT in Korea, Lee, he now said, Oh, Nigeria, we just pick anything we want there and go. It's one of my saddest days in my life because they knew we don't have anything to stop them or to block them. After that, we went into a section. Lee is the chairman of ICT and cybercrime in, in Korea. We're not just in the game, interaction. We're not asking another question that what is the rate of attack in Korea? The guy says zero. You wish I said zero. What is this guy telling you? It's a zero. I was wondering that it can never be a zero attack anyway with what we have been saying. They said they provided something in their own ICT, in their cyberspace, that you won't even have access to coming. They call it blockage. That as soon as you want to attack them before entering, like this, as they have a demarcation. So you hit the wall before, so you can't even go in. And I say, except exceptional cases, is the only time. You can portray, which means it's a very negligible percentage of attack on them. And from further investigation, we now find out that Korea, the North Korea and the South Korea, Japan and China, the attack on them is very, very, very minimal. So, coming back to our country, go for me, suppose there's an attack today, maybe if they attack our CBN or any bank. Or immigration, identity theft. We are gone as a nation. So we needed to call the attention of the federal government so that probably we take a measure within our own level, within our own uh, uh, limit, to take a precaution and be on our level. Precaution, they say, is better than cure. Let's get ready. Proactiveness. That's it one of the essence. We call conference three times, at least once in a year. The first year, the participation was very low. The second and the third year, it was very, very high. All the banks, most of the banks, even the security agents, they contributed, they came, and we got a book from that uh, uh, conference, and we were able to present it to the, to the Senate. So we and there was a bill I sponsor on cyber crime. This is just a motion. I had a bill, an amendment on the Cyber Security Act, which passes up to the uh, public hearing. But unfortunately, it did not go for assent. I have it in mind that even if I'm heading the cyber, uh, ICT or not, I will still bring the motion. I will now bring it early so that. I will, it will be able to see the light of the day this time around. Do you remember my contribution on that same motion? I said, and I quote, that what we needed in this country is orientation and reorientation. The truth of the matter is that how many parents discuss sex with their children? In fact, if you are doing, your neighbor or your other person will be looking at you that, what type of father is this or what type of mother is it? But the world has moved away from that. It is very, very important. You discuss it with your kids. It happened in the developed world. 
is not a sin you just put them on an alert so that they will be able to know when somebody is rough handling them number one number two how many people report se uh, uh, sexual harassment talk less than you even read because of the stigma everybody is afraid that was why i made a contribution that my opinion that let's learn from the developed world whenever there is a rape report all what the government did is that they shield away the victim and it's not the government against the accuser or the rapist so that nobody will know the girl if government is able to do this one or two times other people will have confidence to come out when they are raped but who want to come out that i'm raped i get them when we know the orientation of our people now says ah the raper which instead of the sympathy for the person it now become an uh how do I call it? It's a, 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 a stigma and people not run away. And I even said it. It's because we don't have the reality. Even in marriage, even in marriage, your, I, I said it on the floor, your wife must agree with you. In fact, when I was saying, you know, some of my colleagues were laughing. So, so how many times do you ask for permission? They, they were joking, but it's the truth. It's a consent to consulting adult. But it's because of negligence and I don't care attitude of our situation and our values which differ from the developed world. In the developed world, when you rape, it's a very serious offense. There is a punitive measure. Apart from our law being porous, the orientation that people have about raping or sex or any other thing is it's not too palatable. So we need to reorient people that look. There's nothing wrong, nothing whatsoever for you to discuss sex with your children, for you to guide them, for you to let them know that there are some certain things. Even their cousins, even their brothers, even their nephew, there must be what is called a limit, even if they are playing. It is very important, but the moment it happens, all what the parents do that to cover it. So there's no punitive measure, and that's the reason why it's, it's becoming more or less like day-to-day -day activity because people are getting away with it until we are ready to face the reality like look this thing is wrong it's dehumanizing it's silly it's something that which is not acceptable it's not acceptable but at the end, that's why i was so happy with the way rose okon was confident enough and he, she brought the uh, uh, the the motion and every other contributor in the development when you live all what they needed is confirmation they go to the hospital the moment it is confirmed after the test from the from the lady from the small girl what happened as that she will be shielded away it's not the government versus the rapist so that they are covered by nigeria the nigerian lawyer or the national we want to see her who now want to bring his own child daughter to that type of uh, malady because of our orientation. Even to get a boyfriend will be difficult to place of husband mm. because of our orientation. So, eh? The person where they don't rape, which is not our own fault. So we should learn with the law. That's why I agree that we should amend the law. It should be a national uh, government versus the rapist, not the victim. The victim must be protected. With that, people will really, really come out. And I disagree with the way Nigerian system is again. When you are raped and you decide not to talk, after five years, six years, you now come out and I was raped. If that one has become sensationalism or social media issue, but in reality, that person cannot be punished as far as I'm concerned. How do you prove it's your word against mine? Nobody investigated that, that incident as of when it happened 5, 10, 20 years ago. What it, it just become a sensationalism. I don't believe, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. I just believe that when it happened, report the case, you should be shielded, and then immediate action should be taken, and then so that the culprit can be brought to book.